Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we're looking at Whimsicott GX. It's an interesting archetype which has done reasonably well in Japan. Um, it's one of these archetypes that I initially kind of looked over thinking that the ability of the Whimsicott GX was more of a gimmick, but turns out it is something that we actually can try and build around and buy ourselves a number of turns, so it's one that we're going to look at today. And that is essentially the basic concept. You can buy yourself an extra turn here or there, and deny prize cards from the opponent if you are able to flip heads with your Whimsicott's uh, fluffy cotton ability. And that's basically going to be what we try and build around. We are going to try and limit our opponent's hand size, making it difficult for them to find like Guzmas to get around this Whimsicott. And also find it hard for them to get like uh, Acer Rotos to undo damage that we're doing to them. And at the same time, going to be using um, the combination of Magena and Tapu Lele to also confuse the opponent. So... They're not only flipping, well, we're flipping one coin, but the opponent is also put into a situation where they'll be confused. So really, it's only a 25% chance that they're going to do any damage to us whatsoever. And it becomes even riskier for them because they'll also damage themselves via confusion as well. So the whole idea is we make it unappealing for them to attack us. And when your opponent passes, like you're always happy with that outcome because uh, you're getting to, you know, continue to attack them. That's the whole idea. That's how we're going to try and gain our advantage and uh, win a few matchups. So... Let's jump into our Pokemon. In the top right, you can see our main sort of attacker. We have four Cottony and three Whimsicott GX. 190 hit points is the baseline. Uh, not all that tanky, but because of our Fluffy Cotton ability, it is pretty reasonable. Energy Blow is our main attack. You do 10 for one Fairy, plus 30 more for each energy attached to this Pokemon. So it's a baseline of 40 for one attachment, but uh, it doesn't say Fairy Energy. It means that any energy can damage buff our Energy Blow attack, so... Obviously, we're going to be playing Double Colors Energy in this deck. Can we also play a couple uh, copies of uh, Acceleration Energy as well? Triple Acceleration. So um, here and there, we can have Power Spike turns with lots of damage hitting the field with Energy Blow to help us get over some big threats from the opponent's side of the field. And in general, we're just trying to build up our Whimsicots and make them big threats in general. We also have the Toy Box GX attack, which is definitely something to bear in mind. It's a huge attack for this deck that you do basically every game. Um, you get to search your deck for up to five cards and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. For one fairy, that's really awesome. As I said, energy blow, essentially having a baseline of 40, oftentimes isn't worth the attack, unless you're going into like a, a Ditto Prism Star or something in random spots. Usually, uh, once you get your first attachment on a Whimsicott, you go for that toy box, and the whole idea is you're going to set up the rest of your board, get you into the likes of the Magena Lele a fairy charm combo, get you into more cottonies, whimsicots, DCs, all that sort of stuff is the things that you're looking for off of this toy box. And um, we're hoping that that sticks in play and that we're going to be okay. Obviously, uh, a lot of decks are playing let loose and their own judges and whatnot, but the whole idea is that we're going to hit them with a the judge first and then go for the toy box after. So they're left with not much to do and we're going to get the perfect setup with our own GX attack. That's the whole concept. So the supporting cast is a couple of Jirachi for Stellar Wish for a bit of consistency, a buffing and helping us uh, dig ourselves out of some judge hands that we do to ourselves a lot of the time with this deck. Uh, two, two of the Magina Lele combo. The whole idea here is we use the Tapu Lele to attach Fairy Charms to it so that we can confuse the opponent's active. And then we use Change Clothes from, the Magina, from Magina to pick it back up and so that we can confuse them again next turn. That's the whole idea. Um... Also, change clothes can be useful for the likes of our uh, escape boards that we play for Jirachis. It means we can attach them to things like Absol or Cottony or whatever we start with, turn one, retreat out and get into our Jirachi and whatever else we need to do, we can change clothes and use that um, escape board later on. And I also play a choice van in the list as well, so picking that up from one Whimsicott to another, uh, whenever it's relevant, that's going to be nice. And even letting our Xerneas GX get... Um, knockouts on other GX Pokemon is a big deal, so that choice band is a nice one-off that we can recycle thanks to change close. Uh, then we have the one Absol, trying to make life difficult for other Jirachi players out there. Obviously, they're trying to Guzma round our Whimsicott when they're able, but now you're forcing them to have Guzma plus Switch all in hand at once a lot of the time, and when they're getting hit with Judge, that's not always so easy. And then we have the Xerneas Prism Star. I like it in here as being a non-GX attacking option to help you get around uh, the likes of Hoopers and... Um, the Aloha Ninetales and whatnot, so that alone is the reason why this is in the arc in the deck. But at the same time, Bright Horns can do reasonable numbers with Choice Band. You can finish off um, Tapu Leles and other uh, basic GX Pokemon, and even without Choice Band, you can knock out the new Dedene GX as well. 
So it's something to bear in mind. I think it's a nice non-GX option that can finish the game a lot quicker than something like an energy blow where you need to have a silly number of attachments on you all at once to get a big one shot on a GX Pokemon. So I like this being sort of like a late game sweep um, for us in the deck. Onto the items, we have one copy of Rescue Stretcher. Obviously the opponent's trying to Guzma around you as often as possible. So recovering, you know, Jirachis, Meganas, Leles, whatever they target down is going to be nice for us. Uh, three copies of Poker Gear. Obviously, we are trying to use Judge a good amount of times in this deck, so having odds of getting back into a supporter the following turn for yourself is very strong. And on turn one, getting you into the Lilies and whatnot is always great. Three Judge Whistle. I am telling you over and over again that we're trying to use Judge as much as possible uh, because it's the best way that we can try and disrupt our opponents right now from finding their Guzmas, Acerolas, and all that good stuff. So we want to try and recycle those Judges when we can. Maxing out the ball search for Nest for Ultra, getting us good odds of getting multiple Cottony down as quickly as possible and into our Whimsicott early as well. For those tools, we have one Choice Band, as mentioned, uh, for damage buffing when we need to, and also very good alongside that Xerneas. Two uh, Lightning Fairy Charms, I think it's the most relevant one right now. We want to have a very strong matchup against um, the Pikachu and Zekrom decks. Also, we have to protect ourselves against... Tapu Koko GX because our damage output is pitiful if we're trying to play around um, Tapu Thunder. Um, so instead we have a Fairy Charm to have good protection against that. And a couple of skateboards once again for that Jirachi. We're playing two stadiums in the deck, one Viridian Forest and one Wondrous Labyrinth. Now Viridian isn't all that powerful, although it is helpful for making sure that we can keep having attachments turn by turn, even though we're using Judges. Uh, but I do think having a couple stadiums in here is good because there will be decks playing Power Plant against us. And that's one way that they can shut off Whimsicott, which is very, very scary. So I do think there's potential to play even a second copy of Viridian in here to have good defense against Power Plant. That's the scariest thing for this archetype, in my opinion, because we're so reliant on forcing the opponent to flip coins that having a Power Plant against us is just very, very ugly. So a couple stadiums definitely important for making it difficult for the opponent to attack us. The Wondrous Labyrinth is a no-brainer because we're a fairy attacker and it can only detriment the opponent. Um, and Viridian Forest gives us a little bit of help here, here and there as well, um, but is mainly here just as a bouncing option. You could also think about playing Field Blower if you really want to over the forest as well. Onto supporters, we're playing one copy of Diantha. It's a great recovery uh, option for us. If one Whimsicott goes down, we can recover the likes of Double Colorless Energy. We can recover some Fairy Charms if they've been Field Blowed away. And that's always something that's uh, really reasonable for us as well. So uh, Diantha is a really nice recovery tool if one of our Whimsicots goes down. That's why we're only playing one though, because it's kind of like a niche situation. It feels like if three Whimsicott go down, we've definitely... Like, if two Whimsicott goes down, we've already lost the game. So it feels like uh, you only really have the chance for like one Diantha for recovering the likes of uh, Triple Acceleration Energy, DCE, uh, maybe the Choice Band, maybe a few other one-offs here or there. Then we have uh, three copies of Guzma, trying to pick off things that we're obviously like trying to like two and three shot sometimes, so definitely worth noting. Three copies of Judge, it's a huge card in this deck. We're trying to spam it against the opponent when we can uh, to force them into ugly hands. Uh, so they have to start flipping those coins and passing the turn because they're sat in the active with confusion. And then we have uh, four Lily as well for good early game setup in general, which is pretty nice. Onto the energy cards, I've mentioned the triple acceleration energy a couple times, and that's really nice. We're playing two of them for that extra burst of 90 damage effectively, which is a pretty good chunk to be fair. Then we have four double colorless and six fairy to round out the energy. I think it's plenty to make sure we can continue attacking and stacking the energy every single turn onto one or another Whimsicott here and there is always going to be great. Usually you just power up whatever one is in the active as much as possible until it finally does get knocked out and then you start again on the next one. That's pretty much the whole idea here. Um, so digging out these DCs is really nice with toy box and whatnot. So definitely something to bear in mind. Onto the full list. Uh, take a screenshot now if you wish. It's also going to be in the description as ever. But yeah, that is a quick snapshot of the build. Onto tech options. I've thought about playing Rabombe. Obviously, um... People can gust around um, your Whimsicott if you need to play them again anyway. So Rabombe isn't like the perfect answer. There's a potential for you not playing the Fairy Charm uh, Lele at all. Or you just play like three copies of the Fairy Lele and like three copies of uh, the Charm and just hope that you um, don't need change clothes and you just uh, use the confusion at the right moments and have this mysterious buzz to prevent the opponent guzmering around you. 
something I've thought about playing, but overall I think the uh, extra stage one's a little bit clunky, and at the same time, um, you get a lot of use out of a beginner in this deck, to be honest. So much so that I thought about playing a few different other tools that we could be using, things like Wishful Baton and EXP Share, so that when one Whimsicott does go down, we don't completely lose a bunch of damage all at once. That's definitely something that's appealing, especially because we can pick these up again as well. If you EXP share one of them and then uh, one gets knocked out, you get that free 30 damage essentially and you can pick it back up and attach it to something else. Making sure that we have like the Xerneas Prism ready to go in the late game is really nice. Mina is another option that you could be considering, again, just for ramping up your damage a little bit more. And I don't think it's that bad, especially when you have Jirachi to help dig it out and whatnot. But it is a little bit slow overall. And uh, then we have a Rangra as well, something I've thought about. Just because you're using Judge on yourself so much, it's going to give you that little bit of extra defense so that you don't just end up having nothing. Obviously, we already have Toy Box and we have Jirachi already. So I think we're covered on that basis. But Instruct is always something that you could bear in mind just to give you a little bit of extra defense here and there. On to the matchup overview. I think the controlling archetypes are the ones you definitely don't want to see um, because... Our base damage output is very poor, and we do get absolutely wrecked by Crushing Hammers, Enhanced Hammers, Plume Areas, and whatnot, which is very bad for us. Beast Box, I also think, is going to be very poor. They can use a Stinger GX to get around um, our own um, ability, and then they only need to knock out one Whimsicott, and, uh, like, or they could just simply get around your Whimsicott the entire game and just Guzma your one price stuff, which is very scary. At the same time, they have one hit KO options via Buzzwall and via um, the Stack Attacker. So I think that's a pretty awkward matchup. And I think the Giovanni Mill deck is also very awkward for us. It's going to take a while for us to build up to 160 damage. Judge is always going to be good for us and make life difficult for them to spam Giovanni. But at the same time, I think it's not something we want to deal with too often because it's going to take so long for us to start taking individual prizes. They get the benefit of a lot of time to get lots of their evolutions out in bulk and uh, start using um, the Denes and whatnot to start cycling through their own deck. And when you give them the benefit of time, it's going to be pretty ugly, even if we are cycling Judge on them. I think that's the only real saving grace for us, but otherwise I think it would be pretty rough. Uh, so yeah, that is my sort of closing thoughts on the deck. I think the Judge Toy Box combination is actually really awesome and something I kind of overlooked as well. Um, Making it difficult for the opponent to deny you your sort of selection of five cards is a pretty big deal because you can start digging out these one-offs, digging out um, your fairy charm to start confusing stuff is very, very cool. And um, pretty much spamming Judge as much as possible because the deck is so simple. Uh, you just get a stage one up and try and attach an energy a turn to it. So you're pretty okay using Judge on the opponent because they're oftentimes scrabbling for more things. They want to be finding Guzmas, backup attackers and whatnot. And we're just here going, I'll attach to the active again, and uh, Judge's Whistle, play Judge, and make it difficult for them to find Guzmas and all that stuff. That's pretty much the whole concept here, because we're so simple in what we're trying to do, but we're trying to be effective in that case, because we have all these abilities that we can spam, obviously. And uh, the only other thing that is going to be a slight question mark is uh, when people get lucky against you, when they do have those Guzmas, when they are able to flip heads and one-shot your Whimsicott, Things go south pretty quickly. Our damage output can deplete immediately. And we go from hitting like, you know, 100, uh, like 50 damage uh, immediately back down to like 40 or something. And it gets really ugly. So um, I think being a little bit reliant on coin flips is still something that I am against. And I think once again, this will end up being a tier two, tier three kind of archetype, depending on how effective the sort of judge spam is against people. Um, that seems to be the way that it was most successful in Japan recently. So Definitely something to take a look at and take into consideration. But overall, I think this is kind of a fun one and one that I don't want to come up against too much because it's going to be a headache to deal with, for sure. Playing with a low hand size and having to deal with that annoying ability a few times, especially if they flip a couple heads, life is going to get a little bit awkward because their damage output can get pretty scary at times. They're going to be two-shotting in the sort of mid-game if they're given that benefit of a few turns here and there via confusion and all that good stuff. So... Yeah, let me know what you guys think down below of the list and the archetype in general. How are you going to try and build Whimsicott? Where do you sort of place it on a tier list? Obviously, uh, because it's coin flip based, there's that sort of cynicism that it may not be all that strong. But at the same time, there are a handful of decks that might find it difficult to get through this guy. And if you want to start putting in like dumbbells and a few other tools, let me know down below as well. That's it for today, guys. I'll be back with another Unbroken De uh, Bonds deck tomorrow. 
uh, we're pretty close to set release now as well, so uh, keep an eye out for uh, booster box openings and all that stuff. So, yep, I'll leave you until tomorrow. So, thanks for watching, and see you then.